Hello. So I have started Deadbeat, which is book seven. It doesn't say anywhere. Why don't novels number themselves? It's a book in the Dresden Files. The last one was a bit of a low point in the series for me. It just didn't, it just wasn't, it wasn't great for me. It was fine, but you know, had good moments, but overall didn't do much for me. So now I'm on to Deadbeat and so far I'm already liking it a lot more. So, uh, mm -hmm. Harry's partner in, well, she's not really his partner, but they work together a lot, Murphy, and they're also friends. She's now in danger because of circumstances that were built up from previous books because of characters and things going on from previous books. And now Harry is tangled in a web, to say the least. And that includes characters that have carried over from previous books, injuries that have carried over from previous books, plot lines that have carried over from previous books, and kind of tangling it all together in this one book. So as far as plot of what this book is doing, I'm going to tell you essentially nothing because the series is truly treating itself like a series in the sense that it's not a, a series of standalones. It's like it's all just kind of melding together into one story that happens to have book breaks. So there's just no way for me to really say much without saying too much. So what I can say though is that one of the big strengths that I find in this series is uh, is the emotional beats. I think that Butcher is, is astoundingly good at creating quiet moments within a very action-packed, very fast-paced series uh, where characters are just talking. There's not anything going on other than just a conversation, but the conversation itself is emotional, but then being in the first-person perspective of Harry Dresden, who I don't really care for first person perspectives. Usually if a story is told in first person, that's usually a chink in its armor for me and my personal taste because I just don't like being that close and personal in a person's head, especially a person that, you know, has some things that makes him sometimes unfun to hear his every thought. But this is one place where the first person perspective in this particular series is so strong because it's the emotional beats that are well written, but then the compounding that with Harry's emotional reaction to hearing the story of a spirit that's trapped in a skull or like getting some backstory on that or uh, hearing more from a family member that is newly in his life and getting to relate to him or other small quiet moments. There's one, there's another family member scene that just happened in a dream. Maybe that'll tell you what I'm talking about. Hopefully it should, if you remember anything about this book. That was so emotionally charged and raw and written so well, but it's also Harry responding to the emotions that he's experiencing from other people or Harry responding to the scene that's directly affecting him very emotionally. These things make those scenes so much stronger and pack such a stronger punch. I wouldn't expect a story like this to have such a strength in those intense, quiet, character moments that draw us nearer to the characters and draw us nearer to the pers the very personal stakes, not just the, you know, worldwide galactic, wow, the world's blowing up kind of stake. The world's not blowing up, but you know, the stakes are raising. So as a character reader, as these books go on, I think the plots are getting stronger. I think the character work is getting stronger. I think that this is, I think fr from book three, I've noticed a distinct uh, steady growth in Butcher's writing, um, especially if I'm not mistaken, especially book five? Is this book seven? I'm gonna stop trying to guess. From book three, I've noticed a steady growth in Butcher's writing, but this is the book where I'm noticing an actual leap. I'm noticing some certain things that are much, much stronger than they have been in previous books. And I'm just really enjoying it. So uh, I will check it back in with you after I finish said book and I'll tell you my final thoughts. Oh, and there will be a spoiler discussion for this book on Saturday. Welcome to the vlog. Hello. Apologies that this vlog is not up to snuff of what I normally like to put out. So no interludes and only two clips. So it's also really short. We're going out of town this weekend. We're going caving. So there will be really fun interludes next uh, reading vlog, but we're going out of town this weekend and that's actually going to eep into the beginning of next week as well. So I am trying to pre-film so that, you know, videos can still go up while I'm away, but also school break is 
Christmas break for my kids' school is also coming up. <laughs> so there's like a bunch of bunch of stuff happening. So I just haven't had time. Like I've been in work mode. I haven't been in play mode. So no interlude and not a long vlog, but I still wanted to get my thoughts out here for Dresden and for the little novella that I read this week as well. And also in the last clip, I did say that there would be a Dresden spoiler video this Saturday. It's actually going to be bumped to next Saturday because with all the pre-filming I have to do for Friday, Monday, Tuesday's video, and I'm streaming on Friday <laughs> evening with some friends, I am not going to have time to film the the spoiler filled review this week tomorrow before we leave two days two days before we leave so anyway dresden spoiler chat still happening it'll just be next week sorry but i did finish deadbeat and it was amazing oh my goodness the things that happened in this book can only be described as bonkers. The Dresden books have already been expanding the world like crazy the last several books, but in this book the role that Dresden himself plays to expanded. So now it's not this isolated Harry and his today's mystery dropped into this ever expands expanding world, but now Harry's role and the role that he's playing with other people and how he's going to have to be involved with other people has expanded, and I'm so excited to see how that plays out. But also I'm just constantly amazed at how well this series balances having a really, really fast-paced plot, but also still having really, really rich character moments and intense character beats. I think I talked about this a little bit in the last clip too, but throughout the duration of this book, and I think the series has always been good at that, at having a very fast-paced story while also putting in a ton of world building, a ton of characterization, a ton of emotional beats, but this book just knocked it out of the park. Like, there's always something happening. There's always some sort of movement going on in the story to the point that I'm looking back at this book and thinking, how can I do a spoiler-filled review of this? Everything happened in this book. It was everywhere in the best way, but so many intense and crazy things happened in the plot. <sighs> Sorry, my memory card died. Anyway, so, so many things happened in this book. It was all over the place in the best way to the point that when I, when I look at like thinking about doing the spoiler filled review, I'm like, how am I going to have time to hit all of these plot beats, all of these things that happen throughout the duration of this plot, but still have time to hone in on the character depth and the character movement that happened and the relational movements that happened, as well as the mysteries that are continually being uncovered and, and the world continually expanding. How, how did you fit it all into this? I think usually when I read a really fast-paced book, usually I, a lot of times I feel like you either have the fast-paced plot or you have the deep plot. A lot of times I feel like depth in certain moments and taking the time to actually unpack the intensity that just happened, a lot of times that's compromised with a really fast-paced plot. Not always, but that is how I feel a lot of times as a reader reading really fast books. Somehow this book did it all. Sometimes, somehow this book had all of the movement plus all of the depth. It was, oh my goodness, it was amazing. Not to mention the side characters that shined so bright between the, the fam familial relationships that were in this book, the the new side characters, the old ones reintroduced, Polka never dies. Just unbelievable. Really good book. Really, really good book. Again, there will be a spoiler-filled video where we'll dig into more than just ah kind of reactions on Saturday of next week. Sorry for the delay. I did also read this um, novella, The Fall by Ryan Cahill. It wasn't on my plans to read in December, but Tom from the channel Tom Orange uh, had it on his TBR for December and I was like, hey, can I read it too? So I read it too. So this is four perspectives that are in the middle of a war and they're all there for different reasons. They all have different motivations. And this is like 80 pages, I think, 77 pages. And once again, how much can you pack into 77 pages? Somehow all four perspectives felt unique and distinct. They all, all their motivations felt fleshed out. They didn't feel cardboard. I understood why they were all there. The, uh, the consequences of what was happening felt 
really well explored in such a short period of time. The action was written really well. I got, I got invested in it really quickly. Like it's such an action-packed book, yet still managed to get me invested in the characters and the stakes, their personal stakes in this situation, which is like crazy that that was accomplished in 77 pages. Plus there's elves and dragons, <laughs> so it was really good. Again, it's 77 pages, so I guess that's all I'll say about it. Uh, I liked it more from the perspective of being surprised as a reader at how much you could pack well into 77 pages, but not from the perspective of, oh my goodness, I gotta get to the next one. So I don't know when I'll get to, I think it's called Of Blood and Fire, the first. This is the novella that can be read before or after book one. I obviously read it before. I don't know when I'll get to book one, um, or if I will, I'm sure I will. I don't know when I will, because I'm not burning to get to it. It was more of just, I'm really impressed that you could pack so much well into so few pages, but not, I'm invested and I gotta know. So fans of this series, I know Ryan Cahill is pretty, Cahill is pretty popular on booktube in the self-published self sphere. So uh, if you happen to be a fan of his work, let me know if you think based off of my taste, if you think that I would enjoy it, we'll see. But it was a really impressive novella, really impressive novella. I really like novellas, man. So that's what I read this week. I read book seven in the Dresden Files and I read the novella, the full. Sorry again for a shorter, less exciting reading vlog, but it's just been a really packed week for me, so that's that's what I could do, but I still wanted to get my thoughts out there for these two stories. I hope you enjoyed what you read this week, and please do chat with me more about these books if you're interested in either of them, if you've read them or you plan to read them. I post videos every Tuesday, Thursday, and Saturday on this channel, Mondays and Fridays on the Manga channel. I'll see you again soon. Bye!